great to be here tonight, isn't it? Um, my name is Said. Um, I came from uh, the Horn of Africa, a small country called Somalia, about 10,000 miles away. I'm here tonight to talk about, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm here tonight to talk about a disease that I think some of you might suffer from. <laughs> this disease is called Bufis. You have heard of that? Don't get scared. <laughs> an, abed okay. an epidemic that affects many people around the world, especially immigrants who are dreaming of a better life in the US. What makes both is so difficult? What makes both is so difficult to deal with is there is no English word for it. Both is is a Somali war. It can't be diagnosed by lab tests because it is the it's a disease of the mind. It can be recognized by symptoms. Bufis means to inflate. Like when you fill a balloon with air, or a mind with fantasies until there is a risk that these people with this disease will pop. <laughs> they are sick, but they don't see themselves as sick. They would call it ambition, dream is expectation. This disease has many forms. In the, most in, in the most extreme cases, the sick will imagine they are rich or famous or proclaim some rank like a doctor, a sultan, or a chief, like Ali, who is from my city, Galkayo. Even though there was a mayor in the city, he wanted his neighbors to call him Hogami Yasare, which is like highest chief or commander in the country. He believed that if he gave us orders to build a school or to do something, we would magically make it happen, even though we had zero. People played with him, people playing along with him to entertain themselves. But of course, nothing ever changed. The first time this disease came to Somalia was in 1991. Bufis was born after the civil war from Somali refugees in, living in Kenya, but expanded to people across the globe. In Kenya, when you see people who couldn't work, who came to, who came to believe they were helpless, who disabled themselves mentally, the only thing they believe they can do is dream. Victims of both is all day, every day, Every one of them, everywhere, talk about living. They expect a beautiful life and perfect thing is to be waiting for them. And for dreams alone, they start the process to immigrate with no real balance whatsoever. Some of them follow the law to live and others break it. They travel long distances through many countries. Many of them die trying to cross the sea to Italy. Some of the people I know 
traveling from Africa to Latin America and finally to the U.S. When they came to the U.S.-Mexico border, they were both in jail, sometimes for a year, sometimes more. When they were released, they were thrown into the gas lab at midnight with nothing. I decided to come to the U.S. in 2002. Yeah, that handsome gum guy. I don't know what he was thinking about, but he's thinking. <laughs> but Julian arrived, but I didn't arrive until February 2009. I was on my way to San Diego from New York International Airport. All I knew about New York was a history my friend told me about a woman with boofies. She was from a, a small town in Somalia called Borana. That doesn't look bad, but she was looking better life. And had been fascinated, she had been fascinated with New York. She was in love with New York. On and on, on, every day back in Borana, she had watched Hollywood movies depicting a life no one in this universe has ever lived. <laughs> a life of fantasy, imagination, and pleasure. She constantly compared her life of hardships to the scenes of Western delusion. The type of life where she woke up all manicured and higher style with makeup on. <laughs> where snowflakes fell outside of her second story bedroom, where she woke up in the most expensive silky pajamas. She was expecting that if she reached that city, her problems with poverty would disappear. She said to herself, if only I was there, New York, I would have a two-story house, cars, and a white picket fence. She finally made it, only to discover that her dream was a nightmare. When she arrived at JFK, at JFK airport, she was shocked to see people rushing, ar rushing around as if they were robots. Shocked by the crowded city with its hundreds of homeless in the streets. She was not looking for this. <laughs> it's not supposed to be just like that. She asked several people in her broken English, Excuse me, is this really New York City? They <laughs> After a few days, she was hit by insanity. And now she is called Majnuna to New York, which means the mad lady of New York. <laughs> Standing in the airport in New York, it felt like a city by the surf. And I said to myself, oh my God, don't make me like her. You know, I remember when I was there. Don't make me believe in unrealistic expectations and dreams. Don't make me that, oh my God. But it was too late. <laughs> Before I came to the US, 
I celebrated with Kenyans with when President Obama was elected in 2008. He made me feel hope because he was energized, well spoken, and kept talking about change. Yes, we can. Looking back on it now, I expected him to, br to bring big change in, I expected him to bring big change to the broken economy in the US. But it wasn't realistic. He couldn't fix at all. He couldn't, of course. I felt like I was bunched in the stomach after my first attempt to find a job. My friend, Ahmed, told me about a security company that was hiring. I dressed up early in the morning with a beautiful silver suit decorated by shiny tie and brand new shoes which I had brought from Africa. <laughs> I felt graceful. Like a new groom who was finalizing the last moment of his wedding. <laughs> I left my home hoping to come back in polite. I remember it was a very hot day, and by the time I reached the place, I was swearing so badly, and my heart was beating so quickly. Before I rode the elevator, I took a deep breath <laughs> and walked toward the office. When I arrived, all I said was, hi. <laughs> I sat down without notifying anyone because that was how people looking for a job do it in my country. They salute people who are working in the office and then they sit and wait to be called on. Similarly, I waited for someone to call on me and say, how can we help you? <laughs> you know, I was, I was just expecting sweet and merciful words, you know, just like that. That was in my mind. However, they left me sitting there alone. I, become, I became confused and wanted to escape this terrible place. <laughs> After a while, I found someone and asked them, I'm looking for a job, are you hiring? As I said these words, I was so nervous. I could tell from his face that he was going to reject me. He seemed angry and said, no, we are not hiring. You scare us. Others in the office gathered around as though I was dangerous. I was scared myself. <laughs> I was worried they may call the police. <laughs> I thought, how can I scare them? Do I look like a terrifying person? <laughs> Is my appearance weird? <laughs> Do I smell? Do I? <laughs> to them, I was a strange immigrant. 
I didn't know how to present what I want in a professional way, or even how to speak understandable English. All their faces signal my English was an African version that had never reached that office before me. <laughs> and I understood from their faces they wanted me to leave. Just to leave. No hiring. When I got out when I got out of the building, the forecast was not good. I searched for a job for almost three consecutive months, but I could find it, I couldn't find it, anything. I imagine how other people with high expectations feel when they experience the same thing. I was not expecting heaven or complete bliss. But I did, I did not expect this to happen to me either. Not me. Perhaps I had a little poofies. <laughs> but what about the millions and millions of people who come to this country with extreme poofies? Seeking a better life. What happens when they realize that something as small as a getting job as getting a job is a very difficult thing in the US? Right now, I feel like I'm part of the US. I don't feel like an immigrant. Everybody has challenges or difficulties. But I am comfortable staying here because I found a way to manage my life. There are things I don't, li I don't like about it here, but they won't make me leave. <laughs> I have two mothers. My biological is Somalia. My adopted, who supports me right now, is America. I still have dreams like everyone does. You just have to wake up from the dreams that will kill you. You must lower your expectations to keep full custody of your life. Thank you for listening. <laughs>